I'd like to introduce Cyan Hamden. <laughs> she's an amazing artist and she's got her own studio upstairs. She's been painting for many, many years and I've seen her art um, change dramatically, especially as her contact with spirit people and the Zetas has grown. So it's been um, a really lovely progression to watch the art as it's become more sophisticated. So, Cyan, there you go. Thank you, husband. <laughs> All right. I'm, ooh, there we go. Of course, thank you for everybody to come along. I wasn't expecting to see half the amount of people uh, interested in, in what I do, which is crazy. But, okay, so um, as you're going to hear, my art is absolutely um, intrinsically linked to uh, my spiritual development. Um, with Without that, I, I don't think I'd, I'd have the art that I do. It's, it's quite simple. Um, I grew up in a completely non-religious background, um, which was brilliant because... It's made my mediumship journey, I, I believe, a little bit easier uh, without the religious preconceptions, having to shed them as, as I've gone along. Um, I was complete atheist. Uh, I did not believe in, in anything. I was very much, once you're dead, you're dead, and, and that's the end of. And that saw me through to a career in uh, professional archaeology and cultural heritage, which I, I was working in for over 20 years. I have a First degree from Bristol University in England, and a second degree from London, a masters all in archaeology. It's all uh, it's all open to interpretation, all scientific evidence. It's all very analytical. Um, however, at age seventeen, uh, I I had an encounter with a spirit person. Um, I had no idea what had happened. I, as far as I was concerned, there weren't spirit people. There was nothing, and so when I uh, saw my grandfather who'd passed 10 years earlier standing in my room, I was somewhat shocked. <laughs> um, the The shock uh, f faded, faded away. It, it was quite easy for me to dismiss. And uh, I ended up at, as 17 year olds do, at a party one evening, and I was chatting to a mutual friend of the, the, the person who running the party. And uh, I blurted it all out in a drunken moment, you know, um, Oh my God, this happened. I obviously hadn't recovered. And uh, her reaction, um, she was then shocked. And I was there going, Oh my God, what have I done? I shouldn't have said anything. Everyone's going to think I'm a crazy Fruit Loop. Well, the reason the lady was shocked or the girl was shocked um, was because she had been told in her spiritual open circle that she was going to meet somebody who had just had had a big experience, had had no idea what had happened, and she would end up explaining what she did to help the person while well, I was the person. And so once she recovered, and then I recovered from all this shock going on, um, she basically recommended that I find a, a spiritual circle, open circle, to to go and learn about what I'd experienced. And so I did that a few weeks later. And um, it, it literally just all unfolded from there. So oh, these are some very early photographs. So it's me looking very, very young. Oh, my God. I don't know how many years old that photo is now. But I... As you can see, I started sitting for trance mediumship in my, in my mid twenties and progressed on to deep uh, trance physical mediumship, uh, needing a cabinet. Um, that that has kind of waned, wax and wane the physical stuff, but the trance mediumship has always uh, has always been there. Um, this is I have very few photos of my mediumship, but this one I love because uh, I don't know whether you can see the man to the uh, left of of the lady with the white shirt on. That he's called Travis. And the photograph on the left was after he passed, 10 days after he passed. And that's his actual face um, materialising in the room. And thankfully, we were able to capture that on, on camera. So you can just, I don't know whether you can see my mouse or not, but you can just make out his glasses and the expression on his face. Um, I, I had to put that in there. This, my spiritual stuff, it, I, I just kept going. I, I was very focused at university, but at the, in the background always, was working with spirit people. And um, I was offered the opportunity to try working in an altered state to produce artwork. I'd um, heard of various spirit artists and had actually met a spirit artist at one of the open circles that I'd, I'd been involved with, a lady called Jane. And she, uh, she was incredible the way she worked. And I was very inspired by the way she worked. 
And so I, I thought, uh, you know, why not? Let's try. You never know what might happen. I don't have any um, formal training in my in my art at all. Um, I, I did art in school, um, but I, I've, I and I did start a diploma a few years ago, but COVID blew that out the window, unfortunately, and it was never completed. But I've always, you know, I've always um, sketched and drawn, uh, you know, on, on the side. And so I thought, well, why, you know, why not? She said, anyone can, anyone can do this. You just have to practice. And so I did and ended up with a lady who said, OK, I'll, I'll help you. And I'm like, OK, I'll, I'll go with it. And um, so we, we sat down and she had some art materials and uh, she said, oh, you know, just close your eyes as if you were going to sit, you're going into trance and everything's nearby. She said, don't go too deep. Um, if you need me to pass you anything, I can do it or you can just reach out and grab it. Well, I was expecting faces, you know, like I'd seen. You, you, you hear the platform mediums and they sometimes have an artist working next to them and they draw these incredible faces and then someone goes, oh, I recognise that face. That's what I was expecting. Well, what actually turned up on the page uh, was this. <laughs> and so um, I, I didn't really know what this meant, but um, I, I knew about artists. I was interested in art always, but I just never pursued it. And everyone was, I showed it and I had a good few friends doing art going, well, that kind of sort of looks like a Monet and this one sort of looks like a Picasso and what's going on with all of that? And going, I've got no idea. I this carried on um, for a number of years, and it kind of it kind of progressed. And then one day, um, I was given second some secondhand oil paints from a car boot sale, and uh, I was just sat with them. And uh, I trance state came over. A spirit person move in. I picked up the oil paints, and I'd never used oil paints ever. Um, I couldn't tell you anything about them or how to use them and an hour later um, this was on the page and uh, I mean I don't know I can't prove who produced this but I know I didn't because I've tried so many times to recreate that and I've not been able to stand a chance but I mean it's a bit Van Gogh up to you to decide whether it is or isn't. I, I'm not going to say it is or it isn't, but it's it's got a hint of it. I, I mean, I've never created anything like it in my life, and I've never done anything since. So um, I was I was happy with that. Well, the spiritual development continued. My trance states got deeper and deeper, and any any chance of doing spirit art with them went out the window. I was just too too heavy. Um, but my development went very much physical, and we we had early signs of um, materialization, early signs. And we had voice box development, we, you know, all the sorts of classical mediumship things you hear about in sciences. That was right up and uh, until the Zetas made themselves known in my circle. <laughs> um, when the Zetas moved in to my mediumship, and if anyone doesn't know who I'm talking about when I say the Zetas, I'm talking about the extraterrestrial race, the Zetas. Um, the energy shifted. Um, people often say, well, why couldn't you have just worked with, with both? Well, you kind of can, but it takes a really, really long time to do. But we always say, imagine a radio and your spirit's on AM and the Zetas are on FM. You, you can have your radio there with all your radio stations on, but you can only listen to one channel at a time. And so when you're working with different beings, you can only work with one frequency at a time. And so it was, it was very much uh, the more you focused on one, it, it knocked out the other. And so it was like a very hard seesaw for many, 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 many years and still is to, to balance working with one, one the Zeta race and, and spirit people. But essentially all the spirit art faded off uh, at that point and uh, I moved on. I focused on developing my relationship with the Zeta beings that we both work with. Uh, and that and that's how I met Paul, um, trying to find somebody who would understand what on earth was going on in my mediumship. My sitters in my circle, they were used to seeing human faces transfigured over me, you know, people they recognized. And what they were seeing were like the beings from communion and, um, you know, big black almond eyes and nobody could understand what was going on. I found Paul on uh, Robin Foy's uh, PM for you. Uh, website um I, I don't know i think it was about 2008 2009 
And I was like, can you tell me what's going on? For anyone who doesn't know Paul, Paul um, has had a working relationship with the Zetas for a very, very long time. And he had an online, he had a circle who had a group on this um, website and he was helping people work through mediumship issues. So I contacted him. I was in the UK, Paul's in Australia. And, you know, the, the rest is kind of history, really, isn't it? Yeah. But um, the Zeta, we realized the Zetas were also starting to channel their energy as I was working uh producing art now i hadn't picked a paintbrush up or i didn't really use a paintbrush much but a sponge or a, my fingers into the paint i hadn't done anything for years years and years and then all of a sudden i i really just um felt this overwhelming urge to start painting again and uh the painting at the beginning of the slide the purple tree with the the curly whirlies that was the first thing i painted uh in years I was just I just had to do it I just went with the colors or whatever and then all of a sudden the next thing I'm painting obsessively absolutely obsessively and this is one of the first this is the, the first painting when we realized there's more going on this isn't just a random collection of symbols and spirals and random colors I mean to if you don't know what you're looking at, it looks like nothing. And I, honest to God, thought it was nothing. Um, but Paul was able to identify within this scrawl <laughs> um, symbolism and stuff that had uh, energetic content that he recognised. And from there, that that's how it that's how it started with with them. So when I talk about the artwork I do with the Zetas. <clears throat> visionary art it for me it very much happens in one of two ways either it's like the last slide uh, and it's it's very um intuitive i i do drop into an altered state and i'm just guided and led to create shapes and patterns i don't i have no idea what what i'm doing until it's done and then it's just done or the the second way that they they work with me and I kind of prefer this way, to be honest, is that I they give me an image in my mind and it it's absolutely cemented in my brain and I cannot see any, I can't see past it. It's like it's in my third eye vision. And until I write it down, draw it, sketch it, just do anything with it, it will not go away. The second I've got it down on paper, it then leaves. And then I'm left with the, well, okay, now how, how on earth am I going to, make this happen i i have got no idea the reason i, I now I, i've got hun, i've got hundreds of paintings and i promise i'm not going to show you every single one of them because it would become very repetitive so the ones I, i'm i'm showing really are to show kind of a little bit about the process i say they're highly constructed they're they absolutely are highly constructed every element of this painting has an associated meaning nothing is here just because i felt like it like the, the three triangles are representative of of the way the zetas work. Uh, the blue is is a is a more traditional color theory representation of of calm, as is the color red. You know the the, the three D pyramids are an absolute reoccurring geometric shape that I see with with the race contact and many experiences of of extraterrestrial contact see geometric shapes. Um, if you may, may or may not have watched the, the video that um, Wendy popped in the uh, blurb for, for this, there's a, there's a full description about this painting. So I'm, I'm not going to go into it now, but it's representative of, of a series of events that Paul and I went through with the Zetas um, during the COVID pandemic. Um, to, you know, the, the, this is these are oils. So the intuitive stuff, I generally use um, mixed flow rate acrylics. It's all gallery professional quality and cost of fortune <laughs> i think artists are probably some of the most ripped off hobbyists on the planet <laughs> in terms of the amount of money they have to spend on their materials but um these highly constructed paintings are generally all oil paintings now this is the first oil painting i did since since those sunflowers back earlier on 
Um, I have no idea how to use oil paints. I've just had to manage it and work it out as I've gone along, look it up on the internet. Um, I've, I've learned that uh, green professional markers tape is my best friend when it comes to, to lines. And of course, race contact means there's a lot of geometric shapes. So it's like, and everything has to be very precise. So I can't get away with wavy lines. It just feels wrong and terrible unless they are specific, such as the wavy lines on there. But even then they have to be as precise as possible. Um, the amount of tape I've got through is unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the the symbolism on the paintings is always very specific. Everything has a meaning. There is nothing here that doesn't have a meaning. Um, the, the shade, the same four shades of the same color mix, for instance, that's very specific. And in, and in this painting, it represents frequency. Um, the symbols, I mean, this, this painting is, is pretty much straight out um, the primer of the Zeta race. It's one of the books that Paul has given away for free for... 10 years now, uh, where it talks about um, portals and um, convergence of frequency and um, supported by symbols. And this is what this painting is all about. Nothing is, is by chance. Um, this, this painting represents a rise in frequency. When Paul and I have, have both undergone, I'd say, intense training with Zetas, um, they talk about the art or going up, up in frequency. And this painting was all about that. Um, again, it, it uses the triangle, uh, and this way is a much more traditional use of a triangle. It's, it's upwards, upward flow, upward movement. You've got the darker colours progressing through to light colours, and and this one opens up to an expanse. Well, that expanse is when we've, you've gotten to that that high frequency state, and we we refer to that as an expansive state. And so, you know, again, you you see the same sort of use of symbolism through the paintings. Uh, again, um, this is a very sort of sim kind of a similar take on the other one, really. But um, again, it's all going upwards in frequency. This one's more about um, the hum human ascension and what people perceive as ascension versus what actually is. That is that we're all not dissolving into the fifth dimension, <laughs> and then that that we're all to use our own uh, abilities, and that we have so many abilities that that we don't use. And um, this is what this the pinnacle of the triangle is all about. Really, it's coming into this understanding and uh, expanded state of awareness as we are right now. The paintings, that, these images that they give me, oh my god, to to try and recreate them, it can be really flipping hard work um this one this it's take oh it took me so long to try and get this um onto onto you know, it's oils again and trying to get all these intricate lines and everything on and ev with ev absolute precision takes hours hours and hours and my back is normally killing me <laughs> after i've done this um i use a lot of tracing baking paper actually is tracing paper and i used it as a template to get these lines on um I love the oils, absolutely rich color, a lot of depth. And I also deliberately use different textures of paints to create different, um, to, to create the depth. So I, I, I don't know whether it comes out any well, any good on this photo, but maybe more on the smaller one below, but it kind of looks like you're looking through the lines, that the lines are superimposed on top. That That's deliberate. Um, some of the paintings are, are very much to do with um, the race and the information that we're given from the race. And three in particular, this is my second uh, version of this painting, um, is all about how the Zetas work in, in threes, they operate in threes, everything they do is in threes. And so three is an incredibly significant number. So I have the, the triangles representing, representing the beings and this big circle uh, gold circle is their uh, collective consciousness and these radiating lines are uh, symbolizing the connection between the Zetas and their uh, collective consciousness and so nothing is by chance in, in these paintings now this is this is the one behind us um, this is all about the race uh, the paintings divided into 63 segments and again you've got the three bands and the symbolism of frequency around this, this hopefully looking 3D triangle pyramid in the middle. The 3D pyramid is how I perceive 
quite often perceive their collective consciousness. Um, and so it's all about how the race is connected um, and the, the use of the colour too. Uh, it, it's but They're supposed to be separate colours, but they're all supposed to be blended. And so you have this uh, representation of uh, individuality, yet harmony all within one race. Um, I think I can play this, um, and it might have a bit of background noise on it, but it's just the birds and movement outside. Maybe get a better sense of, of that 3D triangle in the middle, I don't know. Mm. I don't know how long gold oil paint has been around, but I love it. I get through tubes of the stuff. <laughs> So th these are the more intuitive free flow paintings um, that I, I create with them. I, as I said, th this is altered states work. And so when I'm creating these, they just happen. Uh, trying to recreate them afterwards is pointless. I have tried so many times. Um, this, the painting on the left, the darker one of the two normally sits behind us. And so I have a lot of people saying to me, oh, can you, can you paint me that? Can I, can you, can you do one just like that? Just like that. And I'm like, no, I can do my best, uh, but it will never, ever look the same. Um, I, I disappear. I, I'm gone. I'm really not there. I have everything with me and I just do it. It just happens. Um, these are three small ones. They're created very much in a, in a similar way. And it's all about just the flow of the paint. Now, as I'm, working with this their their energy goes into these paintings um i'm always shocked at people's reaction to the paintings i had an exhibition a couple of years ago it was a group exhibition and i had five paintings on display there and uh it was like walking into a blast furnace you walked into that area of the room and these paint, you could, it was tangible. And people were just walking up to these paintings, not these ones, the other ones, they're much more constructed, those ones. And they would just be standing there, wouldn't they? And, you know, one lady, um, she just was crying. She was just crying. Um, there, I had another lady who who was uh, had a really peculiar reaction to, to one of them. Um, turned out that she's highly likely to have, have had contact with with extraterrestrial races people's reactions to the paintings are, are very strange but a lot of people um do use them for their own um, meditation work this this one in particular um was a commission from somebody in australia um down down the bottom we're at the top um and she she wanted uh, what what i do with people specifically is they give me the symbols that are important to them and they i merged that with um the paint the painting as i go along so these paintings are layered absolutely layered they're not just one coat of paint she was very specific in how she wanted it and so that's the con the constructed shape that you can see now her she also had um a connection to the zetas and she wanted that energy in her painting and so that's what I did with them. This was a kind of light altered state piece in that I was, the energy kind of, it's like it kind of throws, flows through you. You know, um, with Reiki would be a good example. With Reiki, it's a very passive experience. You just become the vessel, the energy comes in and comes out, hands, whatever. It's kind of a similar process. You, you feel, you literally feel like the energy, I don't like the word channel. Um, I think the word channeled or two channel or channeling has a lot of, peculiar connotations these days but you're essentially you're a drain pipe for the energy coming in um she had colors very specific colors she wanted to work with and so i try and blend it all in and i work with the person to to to, to get the result that they want so all these little shapes and symbols and everything like that that's that's all of them but underneath there are the shapes from the Z, symbols from the zetas um I've recently started in, uh, looking into um, digital art. And so this picture up in the corner uh, is a not bad representation of what I often see transfigured over Paul when he's in trance as I'm speaking to the Zetas. That's maybe their mm, skin color is not quite right, but <laughs> that's kind of what they look like. 
Um, this commission was uh, this year, actually. It was February. Um, now, this lady works with the Arcturians. Um, that was identified with the Zetas that we were working with, uh, which was lovely. Um, and the picture of the Arcturian being, hopefully you can see that there. It's uh, covered up by everybody for me, but doesn't matter. Um, that's how she shows herself. Now, she's this Arcturian being has been working with Paul for about a year. Mm. And uh, I've seen her, you've seen her. She's evidenced herself in, mm. oh, my God, in the most crazy, unbelievable, awesome ways. Um, we, we never really had much contact with the Arcturians, did we? And then all of a sudden we had a lot of Arcturian people turn up and um, this being was helping with the, with the connection and she helped with this painting. And I, I don't know if, if you can or cannot get a sense of it, but the energy, when you look at this one, feels very different to when you look at the other one. I, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I, I can sense the difference the, between the energy of that painting is strikingly different to the energy of that painting. Well, it, I remember when I brought this painting down because my painting room's upstairs to show Paul because he hadn't seen it at all. And uh, I hadn't told him that I'd been, this Arcturian being had been working with me. And he looked at it and went, that's an Arcturian painting. I went, yes, it absolutely is. <laughs> um, that one, that one flew over to the States and uh, is safely mounted on the wall. God, I hate sending them in the post. It's terrifying. Um, I can't underestimate how massive the art has part the art has played in my own spiritual journey absolutely huge um for me it's uh, a way to ground it's a way to relax it's a way to enable the spirit people to come in back in those early days and it's certainly i know it's been a massive um connection point to the zetas mm. recently i've started um looking at paintings as a way of aiding meditation and uh, this is a meditation series <laughs> but all about color and Paul teaches color meditation and I really wanted to um, think about a way I could use imagery to support that process and so this is what these are about um, I really do need to get a decent camera because it's so difficult to get actual colors but I don't know whether you can see the sheen on that one it's just lovely that's like a magenta going into purples and they're supposed to be really bright and vivid and you know, uh, to aid meditation. All of this artwork and uh, a lot more is all going up to Cardwell UFO Festival this year in Australia. It's Australia's only UFO festival. And I've blown away because they asked me to be the opening event <laughs> and um, bring my artwork up um, for display. And so that's what we're doing on uh, Wednesday. Uh, it's absolutely uh, terrifying and exhilarating all at the same time, um, especially with no formal art training. I just hope that's not full of art critics. <laughs> and they're all going, la, 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 la. Um, I'm sure I could have done stuff a lot better, but it's that's what we're doing. That, that's kind of why we're here. Um, at the festival, my God, we're, we're quite involved in quite a lot. We've got um, workshops going on where we we talk with people about their experiences because we we've worked with spirit people we work with extraterrestrials we work with a lot of experiences and contactees to try and help um unravel what they've experienced and help them try and uh, find some resolution to experiences that they may have found uh, traumatic um, a lot of experiences are traumatized by what's gone on to, with them with all the Congress hearings, as we had a brief chat about earlier on, it's really opened um, the narrative, I think, for people to uh, reach out now and say, hey, you know, I experienced all of this back in the 60s. I could never talk about it, but I can now. And Paul works with a lot, a lot of people, um, especially older people who just couldn't say anything back in the day. But now, now that they feel that, they're, they're more able to without ridicule and you know fear of being locked up sort of thing so uh this this is what we do with all of our contact we we teach we're both mediums 
we do a lot of guidance. We offer support. Paul's amazing at remote viewing. Oh my God. Um, the Zetas have given so much training. Um, we try and put it out there for people. Uh, so there we go. That's pretty much where I'm going to leave it.